Let's bring in Anita Krishna Gupta, head of equity strategy at the CIO office at Emirates NBD. Maybe let's just pick up with the main news of the hour, the Bank of Japan. Uh, you and I were just talking now about uh, the fact that you are slightly underweight, the Nikkei. Uh, does this announcement change anything? Does it change your perception of how investors are thinking about Japanese assets? Uh, good morning, Jumana. So uh, we've been underweight Japan for just about a month. We were actually overweight when the year began. And the way we were looking at Japanese equities is with an earnings yield of 5% with the uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange having a big focus on companies increasing shareholder value uh, by either repurchases or by improving the return on equity. They had a big focus on that and we've been watching Japanese equities. However, when we are comparing Japanese equities with the US or the Eurozone, we feel that uh, definitely getting better performance out of the US and the Eurozone. Uh, the yen, while it is weaker, it's great for exporters, but not so yeah. good for dollar returns. Well, I was going to say, it seems like the major problem with the investing in the Nikkei right now is the weakness in the yen. What do you think the Bank of Japan needs to do to turn it around? They've tried interventions. Obviously, they've hiked interest rates. JGB yields have moved significantly higher. But in the absence of the other side of the equation, the dollar not weakening, it's going to be very difficult for them to bring it under control, aren't they? Isn't it? Absolutely, Jumana, because what we have seen is that even with the Fed, you know, pushing back uh, interest rate cuts and what's happening with the dollar strength, the yen stays weak and the yen's weakness is again not helped by the fact that there's a big differential between interest rates in Japan yeah. and the rest of the developed world. So very definitely that weak yen, great for exporters, but not so great for returns. Yeah, let's talk about the price action in the U.S. this week. I thought it was really interesting that uh, at least equity investors uh, completely shrugged off that Fed meeting and everyone seems to be focused on the back-to-back -back CPI, PPI, double whammy of slightly lower than expectations prints. Why do you think that is the case? Why is the investment community placing more weight on the downside inflation surprises than the slightly more hawkish Fed meeting? Uh, so we've been talking about the fact that equities have been greatly influenced by rate volatility in 2023 but not so much in 2024. This year it's all about growth. Uh, everything that we've seen going up in the equity world World is growth oriented. So the focus stays on growth, the focus stays on big tech, the focus stays on AI. Sentiment is very positive. We've uh, also got you know the AI driven productivity push and that's coming through whether it's Apple or Microsoft or you know, Nvidia. So that's not going to go away and yes valuations are a bit of a worry so is the concentration risk because you've got this huge concentration of big tech in the S&P 500 but that's also the same if you look at China, if you look at the Hang Seng in Index, you've got a big yeah. concentration of China tech. It's, it's, it's the same globally. Yeah, I mean, it also feels to me like it's a bit of a secular story. Irrespective of what's happening with the macro, these AI names or AI exposed names continue to do well. But to what extent can that concentrated group of names lift up the entire index? Because we're not talking, we're yeah. talking about a handful of stocks here. Okay, uh, the rally is widening and we're looking at, you know, moving from AI enablers to AI adopters. Also, it's what we've been watching on the earnings. So there are estimates on where the earnings growth is going to be. It's exponential for all these big tech, for all the AI enablers now. So it's the beat on the beat. So if you have a CEO or the company coming out and saying this is what we think is going to be the earnings growth or the revenue growth, but they actually beat that. And that's when you see the stock going up even more. So that expectation is there and that's what needs to be maintained for this rally to continue or maintain this level. And is there anyone talking about the Fed not cutting interest rates this year? Is that uh, a possibility? And how, how much of a negative surprise would that be for risky assets if they don't end up cutting? Okay, well, Chair Powell has very clearly said he is still watching data, he is still watching inflation, and while he's seeing the disinflation path improving, he's still not ruling out anything. So I think we will wait and watch. Our own in-house estimate is for two rate cuts this year. Oh, you still see two rate cuts happening? Yes, we when do. When do you see them happening? Then? Um, starting September. September, yes. December. Yes. I, mean, I, I just find it interesting because uh, if you rewind back to where we were back in December, the market was pricing in, I don't know, 160 basis points worth of cuts and we yeah. all just assume that in the absence of those uh, cuts being delivered it would be very difficult for risky assets to keep rallying and yet we have kept going and they keep pushing back and deferring the decision of when they're going to start with the interest rate cutting cycle 
S&P, just at another all-time high, it does tell you that there is somewhat of a dissociation between what equity investors are focused on versus you know, what the Fed is focused on in the real economy. So what we are looking in the equity world is at the S&P 500, there's a 4% revenue growth. We're looking mm -hmm. at EBITDA. We're looking at margins. Profit margin for the S&P 500 is at 11.7%. So as long as that is maintained, that means the interest rate costs, the higher wage costs are being absorbed by companies. Yeah, that's what it boils down to. Uh, Anita, I would love to continue the conversation, but we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on the show today to articulate your views. Anita Krishna Gupta, Head of Equity Strategy of the CIO Office at Emirates NBD.